Jesus could have been a collection of beings, 5,400 beings who lived in the astral, surface, and subsurface, not just one man. What I learned was Jesus was not just one man. And these 5,400 beings who were known as Jesus were then slaughtered in the Inquisitions, slaughtered and murdered in the Inquisitions, because they didn't want that message to get out. To another episode of Awaken Now What. I'm your spiritual awakening coach, JR. And I'm your master energy healer, Helen. Awaken Now What is a podcast that illuminates your spiritual awakening and ascension. Today is a very deep topic. Uh, it is religion versus spirituality. And it's going to feel like, well, it's going to feel like I'm in hell. It's about 94 degrees today <laughs> in Los Angeles. <laughs> literally and figuratively literally. do you still feel that kind of like guilt that you grew up with having being brought up in religion to that that hell no i say that that guilt is gone the anger is gone but yes yes people i was i grew up catholic for those of you that don't know we've talked about this a little bit throughout some of our podcasts but i was indoctrinated into the catholic church i was baptized I was even confirmed. And for those of you that don't know what confirmation is, it's a sacrament that commits you even more to Christianity. I think I did that when I was about 15, 16. But yes, we're going to get into it today. We're going to trigger a lot of you. And the point, and we don't intend to, that's not our intention. Our intention is to offer and bring more perspective. Because with more perspective comes with it greater awakenings. Um, which is what we're all about. <laughs> which is exactly what the show is all about. And I can speak from firsthand experience, what my experience was with religion and then going through my own spiritual awakening and then finding out all the corruption and lies and the deceit. But yeah, we're going to get into it today. Um, so buckle up. And Helen, what first comes to mind when you hear or think of the word religion. Hmm. So I'm going to make sure I give my context because I was not brought up Catholic or Christian. I was brought up more Buddhist and my experience with um, Christian um, Christianity came through the form of teachers at like after school programs who would give me a Bible, who would um, basically try to put Sundays like a Bible study into our after our extracurricular out program. Mm -hmm or with friends who would invite me to fellowship. So I, so I have been to church as a teenager, um, but my parents brought us up Buddhist and don't, they, they have their own opinions about church. Um, but so when I hear religion, I think like organized cultish kind of things. <laughs> it's, it's a cult. <laughs> it's a fucking cult. It really is. It really yeah. is. I don't know why. Like this is in mainstream news where everyone call everyone is calling religion cult because it, it actually is. It's a cult. It's <laughs> yeah, because they all believe one thing and they all behave and practice one way and they ostracize anyone else right. who's out of that, right? right? Yeah. Right, right. And similar to like, I could understand how people who aren't, who lack spiritual awareness or who aren't spiritually awakened can see spiritual community as cult-ish. I, I'm, I can see that perspective, but to not see the same thing with all organized religion. Come on, come on people. <laughs> come yeah. On. And I don't know if this is true, but I've heard of a history of like the, the church came on as an organization, just like the military is, or the government is as a way to like, yeah, basically, like keep people in line, right? Like as our populations grew and stuff. Tool of control. 
yeah. rule of control. What I think of when I hear the word religion, indoctrination, subjugation, control, enslavement, energy harvesting, uh, duality. Uh, mm-hmm. Most religions, practically all religions, promote this external, separate God, all fearing God, who you must worship. Fall in line or you will be punished. You will burn in hell. Yeah, there is such a punitive thing yeah. with religion. Yeah. And it was all done for a purpose. And we'll, we'll get into that, ladies and gentlemen. We'll get into that. Um, it could also be explained why society has been under control by a patriarchal society for millennia because of mm-hmm. this external masculine God. Um, that that is a point of contention for a lot of us. Uh, but yeah, usually when we're born, we're assigned religion. We're, unless your parents are hippies. And uh, we're, we're assigned a religion, given a specific religion. We don't have a choice. I didn't. I was born, I was baptized into the Catholic Church. Mm. Was force-fed all of, all of these beliefs. Force-fed. And I believed it to be true for since I was, until... Jesus, 26, 27. That was late in my life. Oh, wow. Yeah, until- so like really when you had your awakening. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, realizing that it's all based on worship. Now, what do we do when we can continuously worship something or someone outside of us? Give our energy away. Yeah. Give away our life force energy, which is what these beings want who are behind all this religious control. They want our energy. And it takes us to energy harvesting. I, I want to get into energy harvesting a little bit. So actually, let's take it back. Let's take it back to my experience in the church. I remember every Sunday, I dreaded Sundays, dreaded it because I had to go to church. I had to go to church and I didn't like being in church, but I know I had to, or else, you know, shit, I'm going to hell or my mom is slapping me upside the head and pulling my ear. It was something I had to do. Didn't, didn't matter what my beliefs were. It didn't matter what my feelings were. Uh, I went to church, sit through the whole thing. Usually my mind was somewhere else, but you know, I was reciting the prayer, the Nicene Creed. Healing and praying, eating the bread, drinking the wine, all of these ritual and ceremony, all this ritual and ceremony with everyone around us. And I was talking to Helen a little bit before this, we started this podcast, like, this is fucking witchcraft. It's fucking witchcraft. It's literally giving our energy away to whoever's in control of, of, of this religion, of this power. Give, we're literally giving our energy away. We're eating the bread. We're drinking, drinking fucking blood. It's insane. And I was, I was talking to Helen earlier how the Catholic Church would, would rape, pillage, and murder actual witches hundreds or thousands of years ago because they deemed them, because, because they were contrary to, to Christian beliefs when they themselves Practice fucking witchcraft. Isn't that insane? It's like it takes one to know one, right? <laughs> they knew who the witches were because they themselves are also witches. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, no, I was. Try- I told Helen I was nervous when we first came up with this topic. I told her I was nervous because there was a lot to get into. There's a mm-hmm. lot to wrap our my head around, especially for me growing up in a hardcore Catholic household. Filipinos are mostly Catholic, strict Catholics, strict, my whole family. Um, Some of my family is going to listen and watch this podcast. And some of them won't be happy. But all I'm doing is speaking my truth. Now, Mm -hmm. from a higher point of awareness. Uh, what What was your experience like, Helen, growing up? 
was that, were there any form of, did you participate in any form of energy harvesting ceremonies, rituals? Do you remember anything? You, you had, you had it pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> as far as not, as far as my parents, um, but I mean, Buddhists um, also have temple. Right. Um, although I did have the sense as a teenager when I was seeing Christianity versus um, experiencing Buddhism as long as I had, like it did feel like Buddhism was more of a philosophy. You know, it's like we, there are certain days in the year that we light incense and pray because there's like a remembrance to it or an offering to ancestors. There was like, like, like a connection to blood, yeah. um, like real relatives versus when I went to fellowship or church with my friends, I did feel this dissonance in my mind and being because it's like, okay, like you guys say you're accepting everyone. But if I like, if I truly spoke and said, you know, like I'm Buddhist and like, um, I believe that, you know, the philosophy of of Buddhism is a more like feel good, peaceful way than like what I see where you guys are trying to push your religion on people. Like I would be cast out, right? right? Or I would be, yeah, 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 yeah. My sense of belonging would feel threatened as a teenager and that's scary. Um, (laughs) uh, And it was weird to get the the Bible, you know, (laughs) and that teacher too, like put my name on it. So it's like, she really wanted to have me a part of there, you know? Right. Yeah, it just it's so crazy once you realize how they pr- religion in general promotes separation and duality separation mm-hmm. and duality when you separate the masses it's much much easier to control them and we've seen that um politics as well as well different episode different episode um <laughs> all right we've talked about energy harvesting Um, and the more we continue to talk about religion, we've got to talk about aliens. We've got to talk about aliens. So in the past, when, I mean, it's, it's through these higher dimensional beings who directly influenced and responsible for the creation of all religions. And the Bible is littered with all these instances of UFOs and higher dimensional beings. And when a lesser advanced, technologically advanced civilization encounters a being from the heavens, as they say, right, in in a lot of the scripture, they deify them, they worship them. And this this has been apparent throughout millennia, where higher dimensional beings have have visited uh, lower advanced, lesser advanced communities and these communities saw them as gods as gods Mm. um let's throw to this clip with billy carson from forbidden knowledge a lot of you might know him if you don't check out his stuff he's all over uh, instagram he just had a interview with joe rogan uh talks a lot about the anunnaki about these false creator gods but yeah let's check out this video So virtually all religions either worship aliens or believe in aliens and they don't even know it. And so when I talk about this, people seem to get really offended right away. They they don't realize that they're they're worshiping aliens. I mean, it's admitted by them that they're worshiping aliens. They don't even want to admit it. So let's have the let's let's have a look at the definition of alien. Right. A resident born in or belonging to another country. Well, we know that an entity from outer space. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. An entity from outer space. Now that the definition is clear, let's take some look at what the religions on the planet uh, say and what their origins are. Christianity, 2.1 billion people worship Jesus. Okay. And John said unto them, you are from beneath. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. Not from earth. You're worshiping an alien. Islam, 1.3 billion people believe that the prophet Muhammad was meditating in a cave of Hira by himself when the angel Gabriel, which is not, who's not from earth, according to Gabriel, descended and came down from above to him and told him to recite the Akra, the words of God. 
even though the prophet Muhammad was illiterate at the time. He actually had to go hire a doggone guy to scribe for him because he couldn't even write what this angel slash alien was telling him that came from space down to the planet to the, to the planet's surface to talk to him. To summarize, all religion worships aliens. <laughs> 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 what are your thoughts about that? That's by the way, did you hear like that how clearly? He, it was a little quiet, but I could hear it as you know, right. paying attention right. and listening. Right. Um, yeah, it was great how he broke down the definition and quoted that. Is it a verse in the Bible? How God says, I am of I am not of this world, right. and you are right outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I want to bring up the Atlantean priest king, Thoth. A lot of listeners might be familiar with Thoth. Thoth, if, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Uh, he was from Atlantis. And then who ruled, who came to Egypt and ruled Egypt approximately 52,000 BC to 36,000 BC. This dude was immortal. He, not eternal, immortal, uh, he was from another, another star system, came down to earth with this wealth of knowledge um, to a lesser advanced society. And this lesser advanced society saw them as gods, of course, right? When you, ha when you're, you, have, the build, when you have the ability to, to, or when you have higher knowledge and hi higher access to these dimensions, and the ability to appear and reappear in different lo geographic locations. Yeah, these societies will see you as gods. Um, this happened time and time again throughout history, where these beings would implement their own rules, right? And then these people, these disciples, would write about them in Scripture, in the Bible, in whatever religious text, and, and deify them and worship them. Um, and the same thing happened with the Bible. It's been rewritten, altered, manipulated for millennia. And I studied the Bible. I went to a fucking Catholic school. I don't regret my time in the Catholic school. I had some of my best years in the Catholic school from fifth grade to eighth grade and meet some of my lifelong friends in middle school. But boy, the conditioning and the programming is hard. <laughs> I was never allowed to question it. I was never allowed to question it at all. I was like, here, believe this or else. You know? Man. Man. <laughs> now, let's talk about Jesus. Jesus is a big part of religion. Christianity, Catholicism. What do we know about Jesus? Hold on, what do you know about Jesus? Is he an alien? Could be. <laughs> <laughs> so what we know currently, right, in, in, in the Bible is uh, he was born of the Virgin Mary um, from an unfertilized egg. And he taught these godly concepts um, that he was otherworldly. When I woke up, I still believe Jesus was who I thought he was until I did a little bit more digging. And it's through the awakening that your eyes will open to, to other aspects and facets of not only life, but religion and, and truth. So what I've learned in my own research, after I awakened, I did so much reading, especially because I, I was religious before I awakened. I learned that Jesus, Jesus could have been a collection of beings, 5,400 beings who lived in the astral, surface, and subsurface. Not just one man. What I learned was Jesus was not just one man. And these uh, 5,400 beings who were known as Jesus were then slaughtered in the in Inquisitions. Slaughtered and murdered in the Inquisitions because they didn't want that message to get out. So the pur mm. purpose of the papal inquisitions was to root out, punish heresy through the Americas and Europe. 
these popes literally ordered the murders of millions of people, millions of people to reinforce their ideologies, to reinforce their philosophies. Is this what life, if, like when you learn this, popes actually, this is all historically accurate. Like people can confirm this, how corrupt religion is, how corrupt religion is. Millions of people, Native Americans, indigenous tribes, and then these, these people were forced to believe their religion. And if not, they were murdered. Isn't that insane? Isn't that insane? Yeah, that's like the dissonance that I experienced. Right. Like, it's not inclusive. No. Like, you're going around in Christianity preaching inclusivity, and then you, like, yeah, have these murders or, yeah. It's crazy. And it's all, I mean, the main, main purpose was control through fear and indoctrination. Mm -hmm. Control through fear and indoctrination so that thousands of generations after would continue to abide by these same ideologies. And this is all passed down. This trauma is all passed down to us. And we're still dealing with it collectively. And it still co-creates and manifests in our own reality. Wow. Uh, it's because this energy is the energy that continues to sustain these beings, sustain these external gods. Wow. I'm still... I'm just going through the motions. I'm going through the motions. Um, we all know Anki. Well, not, not a lot of us know Anki, but we, uh, for more information on Anki, uh, I encourage the listener to, to watch our episode or our interview with Ishmael Perez. He kind of uh, discusses who Anki was in depth. Again, from my own research, I thought Jesus was who, who I thought he was in, in the Bible and the scripture. When I learned this, my mind was fucking blown. So Anki is immortal as well. He is the ancient Sumerian God. And he has lived many lifetimes over different eras. And he's known by many names. Uh, we all know him as Poseidon in Greek mythology. He's Poseidon. What I learned was, uh, according to the West Penry papers, uh, I'll, I'll put that link in the show notes as well, was Jesus could have also been Anki. He could, all, he could have also been Anki. Um, let me throw to this article from the West Penry papers. So now we're talking about a, a god, right. like an immortal. Immortal. Okay. Which would make sense why he could just spontaneously be birthed out of Mary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is all the shit I, 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 I held inside for so long, and this is my platform to finally speak it. This is, for the listeners out there, I'm getting all this energy out. I kept inside for so long, so long. Um, so, um, okay, so I'm going to read it. Uh, what are the most supernatural things we know about Jesus? We know he was born from a virgin and his mother Mary, and his mother was Maria. Mary. Who else goes under the name or title of Mary? Mother Goddess does. And who is representing Mother Goddess in the 4% universe? Queen of the Stars. Now, the Queen of the Stars is the Queen of Orion in a different star system. Um... A lot of people don't know about her and, and her and about the Orion Queen. Uh, but she's very uh, important in terms of galactic history. So furthermore, who was born from a virgin? Enki. Because he was born from an unfertilized egg. So the Orion Queen was non-human. She was more of a reptilian being. Not the, not the regular reptilian we're all thinking about, but a reptilian being who laid eggs. Hmm. And there we have it. The virgin is the queen of the stars. And the son who was born without a father was Anki. Ea. Some, in some spiritual circles, he's also known as Ea. So Jesus was from Orion. In other words, working for the Syrians. Anki as Jesus, Anki as Jesus did a good job. He managed to get a lot of followers. Not so much during his lifetime, but I don't think that was the purpose either. Anki's task was to spread a godlike message to the people that they could relate to, 
take to heart. Then it was for those who came after him to sort out what was to be published and what was not, hence the Council of Nicaea. So the Council of Nicaea was a group of bishops um, that determined what was reli- true religious text and teachings and philosophies. Can you just see all the control and manipulation from, from this? Isn't this crazy? Isn't this nuts? Now, I'm, the reason why, I'm, go- I'm just going over the Cliff Notes version. There is so much, I encourage the listener to do their own research, to do, do their own fact checking. This is just my experience with it. The reason I'm bringing up all this history is for one reason and one reason only. There have been many beings out there who have been successfully diverting our attention away from our own spirituality, from our own awakening. And they've been very successful. And they've been doing it because they need our energy, which means we are powerful fucking beings on this earth because they need us. If they don't have us, they have nothing. And it's through our awakening that we can continue to move forward on the path to sovereignty. Man, spirituality versus religion, right? It's not really a, it's not really a versus, right? It's not really a competition. We're it's doing a compare a, contrast. Compare <laughs> contrast. Man, what do you think about when you think of the word? We've explored re- religion, Helen. What do you think of when you hear the word spirituality? Spirituality, the fact that it has spirit in it makes me feel light yeah. already. Yeah, and it has... I guess it has like a ethereal, angelic quality more than religion does. Right. I think of freedom. I think mm. of unity. I think of community. I think of love. I think of non-duality, which is what the awakening is. Mm-hmm. Um, it honors yourself. I learned to honor myself. Yeah. It's realizing that there is no external God, that we are source and embodiment, that we are God, God is incarnate. There are people out there who do, do not want us to figure this out. Yeah. Yeah. It's been, it's, this has been suppressed for a long time. Long like time. even when we think about the hippie movement and what they were trying to get across. Right. Yeah. I want to throw to this video from Samuel, Samuel B. Lee. He's known as the spiritual psychologist. Um, and he has a great perspective we are as beings. God is for us who could ever be against us. God is not a male. God is the energetic infrastructure that runs through all things and all people. Back in Atlantean times, Atlantean times, there was a group called the Templar Solar Initiates who took on this false concept of the need for power in a patriarchal slanted version of God and infiltrated the religious system to where today, woman cannot even be ordained and in certain cultures they have to wear a mask over their face they can't even dance and this is where it all began this was furthered in 325 a.d at the council of nicaea where the same off-planet on-planet people created a false version of a male god in the sky watching us and if we don't keep these impossible set of rules we're a sinner and should experience guilt and shame this is not true the truth will set us free And the truth is that we are all one. God is with us, through us, for us. And if God is for us, who could ever be against us? God. We are God, people. (laughs) (laughs) What are your thoughts on that video? It's such a good video. His content on social media is amazing. Yeah, that was a great summary, especially naming the part about the, the patriarchy and how women can't even be ordained. And then saying in various examples about how God is for us because we are all one. This narrative that the, uh, this masculine God, in the sky, right. Has been carried down from generation to generation to generation. And it subverts the, the divine feminine. This regime, this narrative subverts the divine feminine power. And this has been done for millennia. Millennia. And it was these, this group uh, back in, and he talked about it back, back in uh, Atlantean times, where this higher dimensional, these higher dimensional beings altered, altered this, this philosophy, this, this, this altered spirituality in general to get them, to get the masses to believe a certain way. 
and he talks about the Council of Nicaea, who, you know, if you if you look them up on on Wikipedia, it's just these councils of, of bishops. No, they were controlled by higher dimensional beings who had a certain agenda. Again, this brings us back how it's all diverting our attention away from our own power, from our own spirituality. Our own spirituality. Yeah, yeah. It's like a distraction. A distraction. I was angry for the longest time when I found all this out. And then I realized how long could I continue to, to be angry because that was more destructive long term. Um, that vibration is low. But yeah, we're, I mean, this is an awakening in itself for some of the listeners out there. <laughs> I mean, most of, our, yeah, yeah. most of our listeners are, are, are spiritually awakened, but I guarantee we probably do have some religious followers. Um, again, our pod, the, the point of our podcast, the impetus of our podcast is to educate so that people can move forward with power, awareness in their awakening, and not paranoia. Knowledge is power. And... When we present this esoteric information, yeah, it can be a hard pill to swallow. Hard pill to swallow, right, Helen? Yeah, yeah. So I would encourage uh, the listeners, if you are feeling like you want to turn us off or anything, just to check in with your breath because you have your higher consciousness to access to and just slow down your breath and kind of check in to know if truth is really what you can ground in right now and not feel like JR and I are trying to attack you. Yeah, or anything. There's no, <laughs> no, there's no attack in, in any sense of the word. Yeah. Let, let's do that. Let's do a 30 second, uh, breathing grounding technique. Helen, get, get us through that. Yeah. 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 So everyone can just go within. Usually that helps. Yeah. And so you close your eyes. You're invited to close your eyes if you want. And just pay attention to your breath. You don't have to change it. You're just noticing your breath in this moment. And as you start to notice it, maybe you start to, I invite you to extend it, extend it to breathe from your belly rather than stopping it at the base of your lungs, because really all of your cells need breath. And so receiving and allowing a full body breathing. You may notice that you naturally exhale through your nose or your mouth. If you're exhaling through your mouth, you likely have a lot of energy to kind of let out. And then tune into your own heart because that's where truth is. This is spirituality actually in action as JR is so nicely prompted. Going to the own wisdom that is already decoded in all of your cells. You know, <laughs> Helen with the calm energy. I don't know if the, the listeners have noticed already. I'm kind of the frantic energy of the bunch, whereas Helen is the grounding energy. Why we're <laughs> such a good uh, uh, partnership. Yeah. All right. We're doing great things. We're doing great things. For all the subscribers that are out there, again, thank you so much. Um, I want to throw it to uh, one last video. This is my last video, I believe. And this speaks more to the energy harvesting that we talked about earlier. Go, and it's again from Samuel B. Lee. Again, I urge you guys to follow him and digest some of his content. It's great. It's great stuff. Okay, last video for today. Against you, ye are gods. So throughout history, there's been false creator gods, such as parts of the Anunnaki, which have literally written books and scrolls which say that you need to sacrifice blood in order to be at one with God. These are false creator gods. What kind of God would make you shed blood? And when someone sheds their blood with these false creator gods, they are literally sealing their aura. And these false gods, intermediary, are literally feeding off of this person's energy or their soul. So the day of the guru, the intermediary, the religious control dogmas is over. G U R U. God is the energetic infrastructure running through you, with you, for you, all around you. You do not need to sacrifice your blood or anything else because if God is for you, who could ever be against you? Ye are gods. So and there we have it again. Blood sacrifice. Drinking the blood when you're. I remember drinking the blood wine so many times. And 
perch. It's this it's dark, it's actually what they're doing is it's dark ritual. It's dark ceremony. They speed, oh, they feed off our energy. What are your thoughts about that video, Helen? Ye are gods. How simple, huh? Right. And it's, I think that hearing that can feel overwhelming, right? Like, what do you mean I'm a god? Like how, especially if you're like, if your self-love or self-worth hasn't been cultivated to a level where you can understand that, um, the overwhelm can hit you. But I think that's what the awakening is for, is like to shake you up and let you know it's the truth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, spirituality, again, going back to spirituality, when you wake up, the awakening teaches you the true nature of God, his presence, you and me and everything around us. It, teaches, it taught me about frequency, vibration, uh, the natural laws of the universe, whereas before I had zero awareness of any of this, just doing what I was told, obeying within the religion. I was indoctrinated. You know, it's through- yeah, religion has like a like a limited feel, a limited quality to it, right? Yeah. Where spirituality has yeah. this limitless, it's just a, infinite. Yeah, that's that's a great way to put it. Yeah. But yeah, it just puts you into a box, whereas the awakening and spirituality kind of blows that box open. Um, there you go. Up, yeah, it, it was after you know my introduction to spirituality where I realized that all knowledge is embedded into human DNA. It's in us. The universe is 13.5 billion years old. And all of that knowledge is within us. It's within us. We just have to figure out how to access it. And that's what the spiritual hygiene that you and I talk so much about is for cultivating. You know, I recently started Qigong. I don't know if I told oh, you this. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. And yeah, and so the nature of the movements are very spiral. And it's, yeah, it's interesting when we think about the limitlessness, limitlessness, limitless, the limitlessness of spirituality, because, you know, if everything starts from like a seed and it spirals out. out and like a spiral is very um, expanding, right? right? So right. it's really cool yeah, to be I able mean, to feel it through your body. That's awesome. I mean, that, that's probably part of your spiritual evolution too. Yeah, it, when, when Helen brings, brings up Qigong, Qigong or Qigong? I say Qigong, Qigong? but I, it's, it's either, either way. way. Um, yeah. It's through these spiritual practices that will open us up to more information, to more spiritual evolution, to more levels of awareness. The more you do, the yes. more you commit to your spiritual practice, the more you will attain. That's fact. That's fact. There's so much information within our own cellular memory that when we commit to our spiritual practice, we can access it. We can. We can. It's as simple as that. One other important facet I learned through spirituality was true discernment. I, I've come across so many spiritual teachers, healers, thought leaders who say deliberately, take what resonates if what doesn't, do your own research and see what feels good for you. Use your discernment. And what do these priests say? Or any, anyone who is heavily, heavily affiliated with any religion, believe this or you're going to hell. Believe this or you're going to hell. There's no, there's no room for exploration, consciousness exploration, exploration. It's here, read this religious text and believe it to be true. If not, shit, you're being punished. Whereas spirituality, I've, again, so many teachers said, do not believe me. Do your own research. Such a simple difference. And in the religious context, too, it's so punitive. It's like the, the punishment of hell, the punishment of your sin. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's insanity. It's insanity. Yeah, and heavy topic, deep topic today. Holy crap. <laughs> Holy crap. Um, and again, we take it back to why, why was this all done? Well, we are again, powerful beings. People need our power. These beings need our power. There are beings in and out of this world who do not want 
us to rediscover our power, to remember our power. Because when we all do collectively, it's game over. It is game over. Last thoughts, Helen? Should we do a now what? Let's do a now what? <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. What's your now what? Now what? After this juicy episode, breaking down religion, bringing spirituality, <laughs> I feel cliche. Take what resonates. <laughs> <laughs> do your own that was, research. That was a good one. That was a good one. <laughs> Holy shit. That was great. Yeah, I'm going to piggyback off Helen and say, look, we, we just went through the Cliff Notes version. Cliff Notes version, short Cliff Notes version. There is so much information out there if you want to do your own research. Uh, dang it, I forgot to turn my light on. <laughs> dang. All right, well, there should be enough light. Anyways, well, well, let's see what it looks like when I turn it on. Okay. I like watching your cat wake up and then <laughs> go back to sleep and wake up and go back to sleep. Dang, I forgot to turn that on. Well, hopefully it looks good on camera. Fuck. All right. <laughs> but yeah. He delivered a Cliff Notes version of the history of religion, how it was created, uh, the reason, the reasoning behind its creation. I urge, we urge the listeners, do some more of your own digging to find your own truths because that is uh, an awakening in itself. It's part of your own spiritual evolution, your own spiritual path. But hopefully we did a good job of delivering some of the stuff home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I felt I felt our punch in the episode. Right? <laughs> it was good. It was good. All right, Helen, this was fun. This was so fun. Uh, I love these episodes, and I can't wait to do more of them. And Helen's due pretty soon, so hopefully we'll get one more in before Helen delivers her <laughs> brand new baby. Yeah, this was such a good time. I liked getting into the nitty gritty of spirituality and religion and breaking things down. Yeah. If you like this episode, please subscribe. I'm your spiritual awakening coach, JR. And I'm your master energy healer, Helen. Please be sure to join our wait list for the launch coming up in October. What are the details of that, JR? Yes, we are completely updating, refining, revolutionizing the Awakened Mastery journey. We'll be launching in October and the doors will only be open for a week. So I'll leave a link in the show notes. But yes, if you'd like to join a community of like-minded, awakened souls and have more structure right, to your spiritual practice, uh, this is your first steps to claiming your sovereignty, sovereignty as a spiritual being. Uh, again, doors open in October. We'll leave the link in the show notes for the wait list. Love you guys. Till next time. Peace. Woohoo!